that guy might not be in the right seat. That that CEO guy, even though that guy's me. <laughs> you're sharing a story and your spouse is with you and you're both telling it, but you like keep correcting each other. I just experienced that right now. Who's who's in charge in charge? Who's <laughs> like, who's who's running stuff? So how do we start this thing? It's kind of a it's kind of a new thing. Um, so we, we're making some changes. We're making some changes in Focus Lab. Yes. Um, it maybe requires some story time. So maybe we rewind first. Maybe we, we look at the past. Yeah, sure. every, it's per yeah, perfect, perfect segue or sound effect. Let's let's start at the beginning because that's always a good place to start. So the beginning from now takes you and I back to 20, uh, can't say it tw as 20, 2006 at the end of the year. Yep. That's when we first crossed paths. And we were just reliving this a little bit on Twitter because at the end of 2020, Flash was retired fully. Macromedia Flash was the context that really kind of brought us together. So yeah. was a heavy, basically a full Flash site. And I'm like, oh, I'm still chopping stuff up in Dreamweaver and like hacking away. Right. And you had, I think if, if I remember right, you had, you, you had a project that was a Macromedia Director which was like <laughs> yeah. more about building applications, not web experiences or something. But um, man, Macromedia, those were those are some good days. Wow. <laughs> At this point, I'm a couple of years out of high school. Uh, I'm a freelance web developer slash church musician slash uh, jewelry salesperson. <laughs> and I, I knew I eventually wanted to just have one job, not three, um, and that that job... I wanted it to be related to building websites. I sucked at design, but the name I was going under was Designs by Eric, <laughs> which is laughable. <laughs> and I think similarly, you were designing and coding websites. The catch was that you were not good at the code. You didn't want to do the code. I was not good at the design. I didn't want to do the design. It just so happened that our skills and then our lack of skills complemented one another pretty well. How would you describe how we actually met after I reached out? So the short version, which is the most important and captures the essence of it is you sent me an email. I didn't respond for a very long time because I just wasn't good at responding uh, in a decent amount of time. So there was like the, this weird pause. Then I came back from, I guess it, maybe it was over the holiday break. And I'm like, yes, let's meet up. And there was the, the magic first date which was, hey, you want to meet at Applebee's? So we set a date, uh, we set a time, we met at Applebee's, you were on time. I was again late. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know that we left that meeting without already saying like, should we just be business partners? Like what was it, did it literally happen in that like yeah. dinner date? So, so have you ever, I, I'm gonna, it's gonna sound like I'm changing the topic, but I promise I'm not. Have you ever, either uh, experienced a conversation or been a part of one where you're, you're sharing a story and your spouse is with you and you're both telling it, but you like keep correcting each other. <laughs> you ever been there? So yeah, yeah. I just experienced that right now. And I always talk about how uh, a, a solid business partnership often reflects different elements of marriage. So we, we definitely uh, did that, but I would say the we was very much a you. <laughs> We weren't really saying, hey, let's do business partner. <laughs> you said this, and that's like, that's first date. And you're like, hey, let's get married. Come on, man, it'll be great. This is going to be great. So yeah, wh whenever I kind of uh, recount this, I always laugh uh, about this just dark contrast between the two of us, because for me, I was just like looking for a project. And that's a very different conversation than let's start a business, even though neither <laughs> right. of us know anything about it it would have never crossed my mind especially that early to consider like starting one let alone starting one with a stranger yeah and so I when you drop that i'm like i'm gonna have to think about that people that know us well that story totally makes sense right that is definitely more. absolutely it's like my style like let's do this like jump in heads first right i think i think the reason for that was looking back in and even knowing at that point the reason for that was for me, it just felt so much easier to enter the world side by side with somebody in that way. Yeah. To say like, we have nothing to lose. Let's just go for it together. I'm a big like people person, I'm a big team person, as opposed to saying, 
well, I'm just going to contract you for a little bit and I'll like write your check here. It's only, like I needed somebody bought in with me. I needed a compadre. Yeah, yeah. And I guess you struck a chord in that, in that first Applebee's day because here we are, so. what, almost 11. No, that's much more, 14, 15 years later. The, the feeling of having somebody next to you to start a business hadn't, had not occurred to me either. I was completely ignorant of how valuable that would end up being. One of the things that I've shared with other people about partners uh, is how I try not to take our partnership for granted because it doesn't sound like it's terribly normal to have as tight of a partnership as you have and I have had and been able to develop almost from literally day one. Man, how valuable that the the presence of a of an in sync partner uh, has has become and has been for our growth. Uh, over the years. It's just, I can't, I, I, I just can't even try to quantify that. We, we left our jobs at different times. Um, but as we were doing that, our for former employer became a client of Focus Lab, which was really awesome. Um, and I don't, I also don't want to take that kind of thing for granted. Right. You know? yeah, it's kind of like, we don't know, we don't know. We only know our own experience, but yeah, I mean, I don't know that anybody at that company will watch this. Maybe some of them will that vacation rental company. But man, how pivotal that was for me, being somebody that answered the phones and then realizing that I could do design. So then I'm designing their business cards and I'm designing their brochures and now I'm handling their um, their website and, and front page. And, um, and I'm like uh, going out and I'm photographing all of their, uh, all of the units and putting that on the website and essentially became an in-house designer before I even really knew what that might be like at that company. And then so much, so they saw value in me and started basically telling all their friends about me, realtors and restaurant owners and all that. And that's really what led to the volume of work that led to me putting that thing on my website that led to you reaching out to me. And then, yeah, ultimately I was able to tell her, uh, she's a wonderful person in that way to say like, Hey, Stacy, uh, you've been really great to me and I'm going to leave your business. I appreciate everything you've done. I'm going to give you nine months notice. But I'm going to go out and try to do this thing on my own and thank you for what you've helped, you know, create for me. And then she came on as our, I mean, that first year, I think she was like 30% of our revenue or something, right? Like a really big client. It was so good to be able to have a client that we knew well, or at least that you already knew really well. And we had great relationship with, and we were still able to bring value to in the same way that we had been. Um, And we just happened to be able to do it as a business and not with you as just a, a, a team member there, an employee there. So we started to kind of beef up their website. We started to do that for other folks. I remember really just appreciating the ability to just write code. Bill, you design anything and we'll, I'll, I'll build it. You don't code anything. And you know, we, we did that, we tag teamed that for a, a few years, got to the point where we could start Focus Lab full time but we weren't focus lab yet We're not because when we met, I was designed by Eric. Like I said, you were ideal design. And then we, we formed an LLC and said, this needs to feel more legitimate. How about ideal design firm? Whoa, fancy. <laughs> and we actually had a decent amount of business that was just code related. And so I can't right. remember if it's I brought this up, remember, right? I mean, yeah. the early years of Focus Lab, we were 70, 30, 70 being development. If, if, right. if even that type of split, it might've been 80, 20, it might've been more. Yeah. It was yeah. super. And I can't remember if you brought it up or if I did, but one of us was like, I mean, our name is Ideal Design, but we do a lot of development. Yeah. And so we, we said, all right, well, let's think about if we're going to start this full-time business, now is the time to think about our name. Do we want to change it? Long story short, we land with Focus Lab and we just set off to the races full time Focus Lab, you doing a lot of design, me doing a lot of development. And then we realize, okay, somebody's kind of got to do sales stuff. Somebody's kind of got to project manage. And so yeah. we're kind of just figuring it all out, wearing all the different hats that every business has to wear early on. Continue to fast forward a bit. We, we go about a year and then we both needed some help. And so we mm-hmm. end up with a designer and a developer around the same time. Okay, yeah. Now we're hiring people. Yeah, I it's just like unreal. Um, other people, other agency owners. That is, that's kind of like one of the critical tipping points. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to hire somebody. Eventually, we get to the point where 
uh, it's painfully obvious that I can't just write code. You can't just design stuff like we, and we also can't just randomly switch hats. We need to actually like make some decisions that are more intentional and define like, okay, Eric is going to fulfill these three specific functions. Bill's going to fulfill these specific functions. And as we grow and we get five people, eight people, 12 people, 15 people, somewhere along the way, we feel like we need to be leaders and not just kind of business owners. Mm. And I, I think it was somewhere around like 2014 or 15, I really got interested in building a business and not just providing a service. Mm -hmm. Even before you and I met, I was really into music and I really enjoyed putting music together. Even if I wasn't writing anything original, even if I was arranging something in my own way that already existed, just the idea of building a song or an arrangement was really fun for me. I could see that kind of transition pretty easily into building websites. But then around this period for me at Focus Lab, I was like, I really enjoy building a team. Mm -hmm. And it was still building something. Um, and I started to have my own like existential crisis. I'm like, <laughs> what am I? Who am I? What's my purpose? I started to enjoy writing code less. Mm -hmm. And was thinking, you know, maybe I'm not going to be a developer forever. What, but if I'm not, what am I going to be? Yeah. And I didn't have an answer. I didn't really force an answer for a while. But it, I just knew I wanted to be intentionally leading teammates, um, a group, uh, not just individuals. Uh, you were hitting a point where somehow you were consuming some type of content that was making you feel that way. But I was not, right? I was still right. very deep in the dribble, dribble, dribble. And then there's no sarcasm in that. That's just the world I was in it, right? It was like, that was yeah. a promotion vehicle. That was like a peer network. And I was doing really well in that world, but that's still a bubble. And nowhere in that bubble is anybody tagging words like leadership. So that's just what my world was. And, and that, that was great and, and that is great, but I think you were able to see the world of leadership sooner than I was, which was good. That's another great value of having a business partner. That word leadership in those types of ideas are now put in front of me. And I, and that started to really strike a chord with me too. So now I'm like back on track with you in that way. Like, yes, I need to be doing that too. That's so we right. had a couple of years there right. where I was, I was more intrigued by and interested in some of those leadership things. And you were just, frankly, you were just busier because it was during this part where our design services were exploding. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah, so, now we're really on the map. We're doing the biggest projects we've ever done for national and international clients. Our design team um, is the, that is the, the size and the volume of the work that we're doing now. At that point, we're probably, I don't know what, 70, 30 the other way. And it's yeah. clear that everyone knows this is a design company. We're kind of like leaning into that while still doing dev. And one of the guys that we've learned so much from, uh, Pat Lincioni, he talks in a number of places about how clarity is super valuable. And one thing that was becoming kind of unclear after you and I both drink from our fire hoses of, of content around growth, leadership, development, all this stuff is, all right, well, we've got like 15, 16 people, but like who's, who's in charge in charge? <laughs> who's, like, who's, who's running stuff in a way? Um, yeah, that's when the and, partnership finally hits its like first point where you're like, okay, we've been doing really great together, but like whose voice is more important on what subjects? Or, yeah, yeah. And if I, if I could skip even a little farther ahead, one of our, our teammates, Will, uh, he's with us for a few years and then uh, joins you and I as a partner. So now we've got a third partner. And so not only is it important for uh, the team to have clarity about like how decisions are made, who's in charge of what things, but it's also really important for us as partners to decide that kind of thing. Somewhere around this timeline of, of Will joining us in a partnership, um, we, we hear about EOS, uh, but in short, it's a system, entrepreneurial operating system. It's a system of tools and processes that help a business run better. And it almost for if you follow it, it kind of forces you into really good, dependable, time-tested patterns. It brought in a new discussion for us as partners, which is the who is the what EOS calls the visionary, who is the integrator, and then who is the who are the department leaders um, as well. And you, Will, and I are talking about this um, with our EOS implementer, Tom, and 
um, he, his job is to put it on the table and then it's up to us to kind of hash it out. And the question comes to the, the, the floor of who fits these things. We decided to do things a little different for a little while. And we yep. just said, we're just going to have a CEO and then we're going to have us underneath the CEO. We'll have our COO. Um, we'll have our chief creative officer. We'll have our chief growth officer. Um, but that still begged the question because we'd never had a CEO title before. Who's the CEO? <laughs> The room was quiet for a minute, yeah. and uh, I just, I don't remember if I was the first to speak at that point uh, or not, but I, I just put my name in the, the ring. I'm like, I think it should be me, <laughs> and here's kind of why I feel that way. One of the things that I think we do well is that we commit, even if we didn't have the same initial idea. I remember pretty well you kind of looking at this org chart that we designed and going, well, if I, Bill, I'm not the CEO, I'm Honestly, I'm not like too sure about where I fit um, the way that we've lined this all out because maybe I'm not going to be this, this uh, creative director or chief creative officer long-term. So like, wh- where do I go? Where do I go? You, you basically um, said your piece. Uh, we talked through it and we all committed that Eric's CEO, Will is chief growth officer. Bill's going to be chief creative officer. And then I was going to wear a second hat, uh, chief operating officer. And we did that. We, we went forward. The next year and a half was a really busy year and a half for us and our decisions. It became pretty plain to us as partners. We finally brought it up together and we're like, man, I feel like, I feel like we need to simplify the stuff we have going on. We're just kind of looking at all this stuff together and thinking, hmm, a great company is probably going to be a little more focused than this. Yeah. And I think we might need to make some tough decisions. And so we started down that path. I remember the room we were in when, when we put this on the table again in an EOS uh, session, I just said, Hey guys, I, I think we got to get rid of development. And you know, the, the developer co-founder was putting that on the table, but it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like a weird thing because we all had that awareness. Right. I think we were some of us more so than others reluctant to bring it up. That's right. Yeah. Where was your head at that point when, you know, that was put on the table and like, that seemed like a big change to me, but did it seem like a big change to you? Yeah, I think I've always been at con, not anymore, but in, in that time period, I was always a little bit conflicted because I felt like web was a really big, important service for us. And I had a hard time imagining development just decoupled from us and then us mm-hmm. still being able to provide that service for a lot of reasons, it absolutely made sense to do that. So like I knew it was the right decision, but I was still in the like, Ooh. which is funny, right? Cause then it's like, as a non-developer, I could have had the complete opposite. I could have just been like, great, awesome. Yeah. Like, I don't need that. But it felt like I was the one that was still kind of like, I don't know about that. And, and what's funny is like, I had, I had been chewing on that for a while. So by the time I brought it up to, to you guys, I was actually really excited about what it could make possible, even though it, 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 it could have meant that I was like cutting a part of me off in a way or, or something like that. But, yeah, but I, I thought about it so much. Yeah. I thought about it so much. I, like I was, I was, it was so plain to me what it would enable. And I was way more excited about that. Like I didn't find my identity in being a developer. And so that also, I think is a, a significant reason um, that it was not a hard decision for me to make. The other element that made that specific decision hard as well is we had some really long-term team members, some really, you know, the, so the, there was the element of letting people go to, which is, you know, never a good feeling. So when you're, when you're nervous about maybe a service that you think maybe your business needs, and then you think about, oh man, and these are people that have been here for like ever and love yeah. it here and we love them and we're gonna have to so that i think that's probably ultimately what made us take so long to make the decision as well yeah and that was hands down the hardest part of the decision yeah but we did it we moved forward we made we made changes to the services that we were offering we simplified things and we said we are a brand agency i remember at one point i i, I looked at you and i'm like all right I'm the CEO of a brand agency. Um, I should probably read some branding books or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and then a little while later, I was thinking, 
but but should I like force myself into learning something? There's a disconnect here. The, the, right. Maybe there's a different correct answer. I hit you up at some point and I'm like, so I'm kind of feeling like if I put my owner hat on, I own, I'm an owner of Focus Lab, a brand agency. As an owner, I want to make sure that everyone at Focus Lab is in the right seat and that we got the right people. You know, the the another kind of EOS tool kind of helps validate some of this, but that's a lot of Jim Collins language. And so as an owner, I look at Focus Lab and I, I look at me as CEO and I kind of go, wait, that guy might not be in the right seat, that that CEO guy, even though that guy's me. <laughs> so it's like, hey, Bill, um, this is, this is kind of how I'm feeling. Let's Let's kind of talk about it. I had to like really almost force myself to think about what I wanted it to look like or where I wanted to take it. And that's, that shouldn't be hard for the CEO. The CEO should like live and breathe that. So it seemed plainly obvious that the CEO role should be yours and not mine. And similar to the development thing, like I felt really good about it after I thought through this. You, Will, and I started talking about it. Um, and then COVID slows everything down because that world changed. The world changed. Yeah. So we were actually going to be doing something last year with this, um, but decided that there was enough change in the world. We didn't want to introduce uh, what felt like it could be a significant change internally at Focus Lab. There yeah. was enough in our team's lives where we didn't want to create any concern that was undue, uh, any kind of um, uncertainty, basically. So we just kind of hit the pause button. I almost started to think about the COVID uh, climate as like my swan song <laughs> as CEO. I'm like, all right, man, I'm going to like, I'm going to go out with a bang. Um, I'm going to be the best flipping CEO for Focus Lab that I can. Um, and then we, it gave us, also gave us a little bit of time to, to think through, again, one of those EOS things, which is that visionary integrator relationship that I kind of alluded to earlier. You, Bill, are the one who has a much richer vision for where you want Focus Lab to go. I have much more interest in, in almost just attaching myself to the vision and helping bring it to life. The, the how to the where and the why and the what. So when we started to really talk through that, I started to get really excited there's just a different day you get to experience when you're doing the things that you're passionate about. A thousand percent. And I realized that my feet hit the ground out of my bed and I'm like, I'm not excited about the future of the branding marketplace or sorry, the service itself or any of that. But I'm really excited about making Focus Lab an incredible place to work, which is very much an integrator kind of thing. So what, what were you, what were you initially thinking about when we started to really like get closer and closer to this. Oh, I'm all right. I'm, I'm going to be the CEO. Cause I remember when I, when, when we just made the title up and I just started using it as funny as it sounds, just, just that title to updating my bios online and little things here and there. I'm like, it feels kind of good. Yeah. Yeah. It also comes with pressure. Uh, yeah, true. A little bit, at least for myself. Cause I, you know, I want to perform really well. That's just kind of like, who I am. So it's like, I want to rise to the occasion, but this is, it's this extra level of responsibility, which might seem silly, right? It's like a yeah. team of 20. I've been an owner from the start. It doesn't drastically change us from a day to day basis. Um, but there's still this extra level of pressure to like perform, like step up. Yeah. But what is more powerful is the excitement. It is, it's that same drive to like, get out of bed at 6 30 because ideas are spinning and not that doing the work is not exciting but 10 years into the business i've, I've done a lot of that and i'm mm -hmm. excited to grow this business and make it what it can become so spending my days the majority of my days doing that is like it's like a hell yeah to me yeah what becomes possible with you settling into this visionary role I'm settling more explicitly into this integrator role. What, what does that make possible uh, for Focus Lab? Well, it just puts us in like our superpower seats, first of all, which is important to know. Um, so visionary, more future thinking, more like maybe unrealistic 
ultimately attainable, but big vision, like go yeah. out there, like big dreamer type of thing. Um, I don't get caught in the weeds and that is a strength and a, and a weakness, right? Like, so detail is not my thing, which is why you need the why and the how. Mm -hmm. So me becoming the big relationship, more of the extrovert, the voice and the passion for what we do, having done it within the organization for so long, um, being that kind of like convicted evangelist on all things brand out in the market is really valuable for us. And you shouldn't, as CEO, have to force that within yourself. So then now we get put in our superpower seats, like, let me be that person. I wake up wanting to be that person. It's kind of like, let me out of my cage in a way. And now you get to lean into your strengths, which is more internally focused into creating the type of environment that you're talking about at Focus Lab, a care for people, which we obviously prioritize heavily. Um, more of the execution, the how, the details, uh, yeah. which are your strengths. So this just positions us really well. I feel yeah. 10 years in, I'm much more prepared and ready to be this type of person where five years yeah. ago I was not, I was still, Maybe I wouldn't have even wanted to really. I would yeah. have wanted to be so close to design. So yeah, I think this just, this really unleashes the new us, which I'm super duper excited about. Uh, oh yeah. So. We've talked about a number of different years. Um, we, we, we sort of have like two starts to our story. We have the start where you and I met, but then we have the, like the business official starting thing where we, we, we consider when you and I both quit our day jobs, like that's what we call the beginning of Focus Lab. And right. that was um, May of 2010, which means that we went about a decade with this previous structure. And now here we are 2021, kicking off essentially a new decade of the business. And we're making a pretty substantial change, um, which doesn't really feel, it, it feels like we've almost reset because because you and I are tag teamed closer again than we have been oh, in yeah. the past, let's call it right. four or five years. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be building something, um, much like we did, like you, I remember you would design a, a website and the developers out there will understand this. I'd be like, why did you use the multiply effect in Photoshop again? <laughs> why did you it overlay or whatever it is that say, Oh, now I have to figure out how to build this. Um, but it was even, even if there were things that you designed that I was like, ah, didn't expect you to do that. I really did. Uh, I just, I enjoyed having to think about, all right, well, how do we build that website? And so now I almost feel like we've got a new version of that where you're going to be, like you said, there's some, even whether it's internal or both internal and external, there's a pressure that you feel to, to deliver um, and to really um, intentionally think about where Focus Lab is, is going. And I'm going to, I'm sure I'm going to hear things from you where I go, why are you using the overlay effect in, in this business strategy? We're going to be doing something kind of like we used to, where you, you'll you design this vision for something and I'm going to have to like, okay, well, let's figure out how to make this thing work. We'll, we'll do it. Um, yeah, I think what we're, be, what we're entering into is it is the new us, but it doesn't mean the old us is gone, right? Mm -hmm. and we've already spoken to the fact that like we've, we've realized what we're good at and also what we shouldn't be doing anymore. We've, we've thought a lot about structure and process internally in the organization, and now we're thinking about the roles and who should be leading them even more clearly. So we've, we've continued to like distill and refine and distill and refine and distill and refine. And right now I feel like our rocket ship is like a singular ship with the right fins on the bottom and the right fuel in the tank, you know, like all the things are starting to line up instead of like shooting a lot of rockets up and kind of seeing like, which one goes higher. And, you know, you do a lot of that as you explore and you build a business. Like now we're down to a single ship. It's like, it is the brand agency and it's in the B2B space. And, you know, all the things that we've changed also, I think have me extra excited. So if I think about that comment about if I had done this five years ago, I don't know that I would have been pumped to be CEO of a web and, brand shop or whatever right. we find ourselves, which was confusing right where now it's like everything is so singular we have fallen we have finally fallen into our name of focus and um that just makes it so much easier for me too which i think which is why i'm i feel like i'm set up for success in that mm. way i'm i'm so uh glad that we met at Applebee's, uh, you know, 15 years ago, or whatever this was. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really fun to have this designer developer kind of 
uh, bandmate music that we made. Um, and I'm, I think that we're about to make some real good music too. Um, and not to say it's like the Bill and Eric show, but you know, for right now, we're just telling the story of the visionary integrator as, as we work together. Uh, of course, none of this would be possible without the, again, the great, great people that we have the fortune to work with every day. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to, to just see what's next with us. I mean, I know what's next, but I can't spill the beans. So, you know, <laughs> um, I'm really excited, really excited. Yeah, yeah, I am. It starts to feel cliche when you own a business and, and the majority of the years you go, next year is going to be our next year. You almost feel like I can't say that again. This year should be a pretty damn fantastic year for us. And it's not just because of this change that we're talking about specifically. Yeah. It's one ingredient in the recipe that really helps to propel all the things. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm mega excited as well. Cool, man. Well, I think we did it. I think we, I think we got to our finish line and uh, we, can, we can go share this with the world. So yeah, man. thanks. Good chat. Yeah. Ciao.